flow. Right, so we're going to go over uh, the next bit of Unit 4, Assignment 1. So last week we looked at how different departments function uh, and you did some research on that um, individually and in a team. So hopefully um, you've all put something together and shared that back to your team so that your teammates can use that information uh, as part of their report in a, in a timely manner. Okay, if you've not done that or if someone in your team hasn't done that, maybe... Um, you know, just pass that information on to me, but you need to chase them as well because this is your team and this is the information that you're not getting. So, but let me know uh, what the state of play is, please. Right, so what are we doing this week? So this week, well, let's, let's have a look back at the assignment. Let's always start at the assignment. So here we are. Now, we don't want to open in Adobe Acrobat. It's absolutely fine. Right, so this week... We're looking at information related to methods that give an engineering organization could adapt to gain a competitive advantage. Copyright, design right, registered design, trademark, registered trademark, patent and creative commons. So I'd, I'd like you to have, have a look at all of these things really. Um, creative commons, it's not mentioned in the spec specifically, but it is a relatively new way of thinking about copyright. Okay, so. Let's start with copyright. What is copyright? What does what does copyright mean? Um, it's a bit of a minefield, really. Um, not least because um, the length of copyright until recently, every time that the, the deadline for, for copyright running out um, ran out, um, the big corporations like Disney and people would would go to the courts in America and say, "Oh no, 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 no! Copyright can't possibly run out." Um, extended and so the current copyright on something is I think about 70 years so that means that I can create something and then I can without having to do anything else I can benefit from that thing that I've created I can get money from that for entitled to get money from that for 70 years um, you know I, I wish I wish teaching was the same I wish I could copyright to uh, copyright my lessons and every, every time you used uh, you use something you learned in one of my classes. I got uh, I got money because it was copyrighted. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Imagine that. Um, so we'll have a discussion about this in in class. But um, you know, how do you get copyright? Well, it's a right. You get copyright simply by creating something. So, for example, I'm just going to, for example. These things in the picture, yeah, pen grips. I think I've got copyright on these because in 1992, maybe 1991, for my A-level project, I designed some pen grips and they look remarkably like this. So I think I've got copyright on these. Now, of course, the problem is, it's not worth anything because it'd be quite hard to prove that I came up with the idea. And then I'd also have to prove that they are infringing on my copyright and that they have to pay me money. And of course, in order to do that, I'd have to go to court and that would cost me money, which I don't have. Um, so, you know, because I designed these for my A-level project, I think I've got copyright on them. But... Again, copyright's only something we really worry about when there's money involved. Um, so, you know, should I should I go to court and try to prove that I have copyright of those? I don't know. I'm, personally, I'm, I'm not that fussed. Mm -hmm. But the point is that it's in the creation of the idea. So, for example, if I borrowed your phone and I took a photo of you or the class or anything really uh, who has copyright okay um, if you want to pause the video if you're doing this in class and just have a have a discussion yeah if, if I take your phone and take a photo with it who has copyright of that, of, of, of that? all right so just pause and have a discussion for five minutes okay welcome back so the answer is me I have the copyright of that image because I took the photo. 
Yeah. And at which point you're probably saying, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's my phone. You'd have to prove it. And, and, and that's the point, isn't it? I'd have to prove that it was me that took the photo and not you. Yeah. And I'd have, have copyright. And it comes across as a very silly example, but it, it's, it's absolutely true. It's absolutely the way copyright works. And if we have a look over here, he says, you'll see that we've got a picture of a monkey staring into a camera lens. And why, what does that monkey have to do with copyright dispute? Well, a wildlife photographer went into the deepest, darkest jungle and spent several weeks setting up cameras, taking photos, leaving cameras around, encouraging the monkeys to play with them. And this photo was actually taken by the monkey. So this monkey looked into the lens, pressed the button, and took its own photo. So it's a selfie from the monkey. So it has been argued that the photographer that did all this work, because he didn't actually take the photo, he doesn't have copyright of this, and that this is now public, a public domain picture that anybody can use. And there's been, you know, um, there's been court cases over it. Um, so... Um, and, and because of that, the photographer states that he's, he's lost out on tens of thousands of pounds of earnings because uh, because this this um, this photo has been taken into the public domain, and he can't claim put copyright because he didn't take the photo because the monkey took the photo. So it was a, it was a very silly example, but it has you know real life real life consequences and, and knock on you know. So if I took a photo on your phone, you know, I have copyright, big deal. But if you then, you know, if for whatever reason, you know, you uploaded that to social media and that, that starts going viral and suddenly you, you've got ad revenue streaming in and you're becoming a multimillionaire off, off, that, um, off that one photo that I took on your phone, then I'm going to start wanting some of that money. And so copyright at that point starts to become something that you're concerned about. Okay. So... That's copyright. Yeah, you don't have to do anything special for it. Just the act of creation confers you the right copyright. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So you can uh, you can you can go to this website. That's Wikipedia. You can find out a little bit more um, about the uh, about 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 the copyright dispute uh, around that. It's interesting. Honest. Okay, flicking back to the Assignment, this is when you start to know about design right. So uh, design right is, is, is another um, another right like copyright, but tends to be more geared towards the physical form of something. Um, okay. Registered design, you know when you see a logo and there's that little R in the circle? Yeah. No, it's a registered, it's a registered trademark, isn't it? Registered design is, is like, sorry, getting all confused. Design right is something you get automatically. A registered design um, is an extension of design right in that you register the design with, a, with, with the office of um, uh, that, uh, the department that deals with these things, and uh, which I'm sure you'll tell me in your assignment. Uh, so it's a registered design, so you have more rights associated with that design because it's registered. You have more uh, legal recourse to stop people stealing that design or using that design. Okay, it's registered design. Uh, a trademark is a mark under which you trade your company's logo or uh, text in a certain font or picture. It's what, what you trade under. Uh, and again, just by just by trading on, under that, you, you have certain rights. But any, um, any you know, once, once once a company business starts to get a bit bigger, um, it will register its trademark. So it goes to uh, is it Trading House, um, and it registers the trademark, and that's where you see the little R in the circle next to uh, next to a logo or something. It's a registered trademark, and that means that nobody else can can use something similar, um, or if they do, um, you know they can't be trading in a in a similar way. So uh, for example, Apple, um, you might remember. Well, you, know, you probably don't remember, do you? So th there are two apples. There's, there's the apple that you that you all all know um, that produces phones and and, uh, and computers and 
the music store. And then there's also Apple Music, which is the record label of uh, that little known band, The Beatles. Uh, love them or hate them. Um, but um, so they, they're both, both called Apple, both have an Apple as their logo. Um, and the agreement was that, you know, Apple could continue to, to use Apple for computers um, because, you know, no one would get confused with Apple for music. And then, of course, Apple opened iTunes and, and suddenly, um, suddenly things got nasty. Um, so for quite a while after iTunes opened, you couldn't buy uh, any Beatles tracks on iTunes because they, they were in dispute over over the Apple trademark and, and, and infringement and things. Um, so I don't know. there you go. You know, you could probably find out a bit more about that if you wanted. Um, so that's a registered trademark. Finally, patents. Um, a patent is designed to give a window of opportunity, exclusivity uh, for a new idea. So um, I think off the top of my head is five years. Uh, obviously, you can confirm this in your research. Um, so you, 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 you get a certain amount of time. The, the idea has to be novel. Um, and the, uh, so it's got to, be, got to be a new idea. Um, then uh, nobody else is allowed to develop that idea until you've brought it to market. Um, originally, uh, I, I believe it was intended so that smaller companies um, wouldn't be uh, done over by larger companies with with more resources, you know. So oh, I've got a brilliant idea, and then it gets you know gets taken to market by a by a competitor first. Um, so you know, now if, if you had a patent, you could uh, you could um, stop the uh, the the larger company from from doing that by uh, taking them to court for patent infringement. So um, and finally, Creative Commons. Um, creative Commons is is the new kid on the block, really, and looks at a. Uh, a new way of doing copyright um, that's not all or nothing. So instead of all rights reserved for copyright, it's it's some rights reserved. So we'll we'll just have a brief look at Creative Commons. Okay. So Creative Commons allows you to fine tune your uh, copyright, what rights you you want to want to reserve. So um, it could be that you know. You, you allow people to copy your work as long as they give you credit. Uh, it could be that you allow people to do whatever they want with their work. It might be that um, you allow people to copy your work and make money off your work uh, as long as they don't change it. Yeah. Um, so so that there's there's a whole whole different range of of settings you can you can share for your your Creative Commons um, Creative Commons license. So, you know, it might might well be the the, the future for for creative but for, for copyright because um, at, at the moment copyright is a bit of a nightmare. Um, you know, I've got a friend at the BBC who has to vet clips that go in BBC programs for copyright, and it's you know if there's a piece of music playing, they need to find out who played the piece. You know, if this was a piece of background music in the clip, then they have to find out who's playing the piece of music in the background in the clip so that they can get royalties for that and you know it's, it's a bit like um you know youtube videos have been taken down for having some music on in the background you know because somebody somewhere wants some money so um so yeah um you know so that's just a brief overview of of the, what we need to be researching and making notes on and getting ready for a report this week okay so um i'll just uh point out this video here which is uh, fairly entertaining uh, 40 minutes long but it does dive into the uh, intricacies and uh, pitfalls of, of copyright so if you want a, a, a entertaining insight into into the world of copyright I'd recommend that video um, and so below here we've got various websites that will help you research and deepen your understanding about copyright um, obviously other websites are available if you find any particularly good ones let me know and I'll add them to the list um, and that's your task this week then is to um, find out about copyright, design right, trademarks um, and the other things mentioned in the assignment uh, and to research those and to 
start to incorporate those into your report. Okay. Next week, we'll be looking at the wonderful excitement that is contracts and warranties. Uh, and then the week after, we'll be wrapping it all up and handing in an assignment on Friday. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you soon.